So we'll go over chapter number three, ethics in business. It's difficult to actually define ethics, but basically it is a study of how people behave in different ethical situations. So one has to make some choices and they may be presented with like few different options, especially related to ethics. So how people behave or what kind of choices they make in life when they are in that situation. And there are like different systems, moral relativism, it holds that there is no universal moral truth. So universally like uh, we cannot say something is right or wrong, but only people's individual beliefs, perspectives and values. So each person has his own set of ideas in terms of uh, what is right or what is wrong or what is right related to something else or what is wrong related to something else. And then there is something called situational ethics. So this is based on the idea that people make decisions based on a specific situation instead of universal laws. So when people are faced with like difficult choices in a given situation in their life, at that time they make those choices based on what they think is right or what they think is wrong. And then you have third one, basically based on the ethics related to what is preached in certain religions such as Jews or Christian religion what they say becomes ethics like how people should conduct themselves how they should behave with others all those are part of third one now what is unethical behavior given the parameters like all these different things so given those parameters of ethics anybody who behaves outside of that if they're in culture their system their religion they say that you should not do this and people do that obviously that becomes unethical and then there is a difference between the two, unethical and amoral. Unethical behavior does not conform to a set of approved standards of social and professional behavior. But amoral behavior is when a person has no sense of right or wrong and they are not even worried about the consequences that may come because of their behavior. So that person we can say is behaving in an amoral way. Now, how do you determine your code of personal ethics? So if you look at like uh, different uh, parameters, so one of them is base character. And then if you ask this question, what characteristics would others use to describe you? Which could be your friends, your family, or people who know you, or people with whom you have like professional working uh, kind of relationship. So what characteristics they will use to define you? So that defines your base character. So somebody may say, oh, this person is really honest or this person is reliable. Like if you give something, you can rest assured that that work will be done or if that person has committed something, they will do it. So that kind of reliable or kind hearted person or some people may say, oh, this guy is like self-centered. He doesn't think about anybody else, always thinks about himself or herself or is very aggressive. On the other hand, some people find somebody may be very courageous because whatever choices they make in a very difficult situation, that defines their base character. If you look at beliefs, then the question that comes to mind is, what are the most important beliefs you hold and use to make decisions in your life? So what is important to you in your life when you are making all kinds of decisions? Some people may believe that nice guys finish last so if you are nice to everyone then you rest assured that you will be the last person always you are never going to win somebody may believe in hard work always pays off so they will continue to work hard irrespective of like whatever may be the outcome in the short term but they may feel that if i continue to do that ultimately i'll reap the benefits so some people will work with that they don't care today people are criticizing them or today they are facing failures in life but they know that if they continue to work hard one day they will definitely succeed or somebody may have like we must stand for right against wrong being just a spectator or just sitting quietly and not participating in like uh, important things in the world things that are going on not having any voice so some people think that that's not good and they believe in that and they will always say what is right or stand against what is wrong and then you have belief origins where is it coming from why somebody is like that 
so where did your beliefs or your view of your character come from and some examples are like family some people have like very strong values in their family and from childhood they have that kind of system it may come from religion like listening to people some wise words of advice what is right what is wrong or it might come from like somebody sees a movie and they are impressed by the character and they feel that that's how i think things should be or people use their personal experiences people who you admire somebody is your role model and you want to be something like that if the characteristic is a behavior how do your relationships reflect your character and beliefs the way you behave with others the way you interact with others so how does that affect i have mostly shallow relationships because i tend not to follow through on my commitments so some people make friendships it's for almost like ever and some people are not able to make friends so i have many deep long lasting friendships because i value friendship and work to take care of my friends if somebody is a friend you will expect that that friend will be there in good times and bad times it's not that some friends are only there when you have good times so the real test is when a friend is in need and if friend shows up then only we say like a friend in need is a friend indeed if you come to business again everybody will be in some kind of a difficult situation where you have to make some kind of decision in your mind like whether you should go this way or you should go that way so what if you are asked to act against your ethics so you have some principles you have some ethics and your boss says that you must do that because you are working for the company and company pays you even if a product is not good you have to talk very nicely about the product or something like that so what do you do what if you unknowingly do something wrong so you are working for a company or a business and somehow you are you are not aware of something but you do something which is wrong in terms of like company's philosophy or ethical standards you may not be aware that maybe there is such a rule but unknowingly you make that mistake but then what if you knowingly do something unethical or even illegal obviously second one definitely looks worse because you know about something you are doing wrong and you still do it but if you unknowingly do something wrong still like in court of law if something is wrong you are still held responsible it was your responsibility to educate yourself about the rules and procedures or laws that the company or the country has you cannot simply say that i unknowingly like hit somebody and that person died on the road still you will have to go to jail if somebody does that doing knowingly or unknowingly both are bad but i guess this is more bad relative to the second one in business uh, we have price fixing which is illegal practice when a group of companies agree to set a product price this is something wrong against the customer or consumer who is buying the product because if the competitors compete the idea of competition is that the price will be driven down and consumers benefit because they get like better quality product at low price but what if like all the top players who are selling that product come together and decide that all of us will keep the prices very high so that all of us can make lot of profit and the customer has like no way to go because they have to purchase our products like if it is a smartphone company and think about the top players they come together and decide like from tomorrow onwards every smartphone will cost at least $2000 and the customer has no choice they have to pay because something which is uh, important they will still somehow pay for it that's what is called price fixing and it is illegal and one example became a very big news uh, some time back where mark whitcre so he was the senior executive at adm which was a big company and uh, they were doing price fixing where they were collaborating with other top players and fixing the price so that all of them can make lot of money all the companies at the cost of customers or consumers and he was like supposed to get a promotion at the company but his wife somehow confronted him and uh, threatened him like she is going to divorce him if he doesn't correct his like paths or whatever he was doing 
So ultimately, he went to FBI and told everything, the entire story, and thousands of hours of, I think, uh, videotapes and all those things were created. And many people suffered the consequences, but it was a very big story. Identifying a company's ethics. How can you examine company's ethics? How can we get access to what are their ethics or what they think about ethics and how they ensure that their employees are working as per whatever parameters uh, they have developed. So anybody who is interested uh, nowadays, it's very common that companies, uh, they document their philosophies. And there's something called code of ethics, a statement of the company's commitment to ethical practices. For most of the leading companies, you'll be able to find a document about what the senior management or what the company thinks about these things, ethics and how people should behave, how employees should behave, how senior management should behave. And not only that, they also have something called mission statement, which defines the core purpose of an organization. So why this company exists and what exactly they are doing to make sure that people understand everybody is on the same page. So that's something like good in business, you can always find things documented if you have a question, but documenting something is one thing and then behaving as per that altogether different thing. That's why from time to time we have cases like ADM. Now another thing uh, is called CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility which is a very, very important document that some companies create. This CSR is built upon these five pillars and each pillar is important like human rights and employment standards in the workplace. What could be more important than that? Ethical sourcing and procurement, like my company will not engage in any other business or supplier who has like unethical practices. Marketing and consumer issues, and then most of the good companies not only talk in terms of other things, but also like they want to save the world and keep environment clean and without any pollution. So health and safety concerns are also important for them, or at least they want to present that this is our culture. And the last pillar is community and good neighbor policies. Many good companies, they spend a lot of money. They do like donations, they open schools. So those things are very common to look good in the eyes of the customer or consumer. So can a company really be socially responsible? So this is a very strange kind of question. So we are talking about ethics and how businesses try to make sure that they behave ethically. And then somebody asks this question, can a company really be socially responsible? Is it even like something you can think about? So economist Milton Friedman, he said, asking a corporation to be socially responsible makes no more sense than asking a building to be. So there are conflicts of CSR. Difficult to measure how CSR interacts with the long-term responsibility to the community or planet and difficult to balance profits for shareholders and quality for consumers. So CSR promises too many things, but then somebody who is implementing CSR in their company, while doing that, they are going to face these kind of challenges and suddenly they see that it's not easy. It's not easy to document something like CSR. But there are benefits, that's why people do it. So there's a positive repetition in the marketplace. So if you know that a company cares about human rights, cares about the environment, it cares about the neighbors or community, obviously it sends a very positive signal. Strong recruitment and talent retention could be another benefit. People who get attracted to this company because they have all these good practices, Efficiency increases when companies use materials efficiently and minimize waste. That's another benefit. Uh, actually, it directly helps with profits and increase sales via product innovation and environmentally and ethically conscious labeling. When you see that label, it's possible to recycle them. So you feel at least you are doing something and you want to buy that product. Or you know that this company will donate some part of their profit to hospitals or some other places. So you may get attracted to buy something from that company. So definitely there are benefits of CSR. But measuring CSR obviously is not easy. Is it possible to measure a company's uh, CSR level? 
There are some social audits that people do, but again, the results are very subjective. It's not like you are going with the ruler or some measuring instrument and it can be measured easily. There are different types of companies. They make like different type of products and services. Sizes are different, like somewhere you have 10 people working for the company, somewhere you have like 100,000 people. So all those things are definitely, they are going to make things difficult to assess. But there are some ratings and rankings related to CSR. One of them is Boston College Center for Corporate Citizenship. They have some kind of uh, assessment. There is Calvert Investment Company that does some kind of measurement. But the most popular, I think, is the Fortune's 10 Most Admired Companies. Okay, so this is a 2022 list. Amazon is there, Apple is there, Starbucks is there, Netflix is there. These are some way to understand or assess. But again, it's a very complex thing. It's not easy to figure out a way to measure. So there are challenges of CSR. Balancing the demands of social responsibility with successful business practices. These businesses, by definition, are for profit. Conflicting demands pose numerous ethical challenges, making life-saving drugs available to the world's poor. When this COVID hit and Pfizer made these medicines, so it will be interesting to see like how much of that was given free of cost from how much they made profits. Conducting a profitable business in environmentally sound manner so what happens is if you are focusing on that and you are doing business the chances are that to take care of the environment you may have to spend extra money every extra money is expense and it takes away some of your profits so for example there could be liquid waste flowing out of a chemical plant are you going to let it go into a river or are you going to clean it up before it is sent to the river which are like harmful to the planet and also to the society because it can mix with water and then the drinking water is polluted. How do you control that? There is always uh, this kind of challenge when business has to make profit but also spend some money to help the planet. So what is the effect of CSR on society? So definitely it has positive impact on environment, their local and global impact. And especially like nowadays we have so many companies which are multinational. They don't operate in just one country, but they have presence everywhere. So it is difficult that a company which is very responsible, like socially and environmentally, in one country and other country, they suddenly become like uh, careless. So that's unlikely to happen. So that way, it has a good impact overall, locally as well as globally. Economic uh, product availability, price and quality and business sustainability. When companies do CSR, ultimately in the long run, because public have positive view of these companies, they will prefer buying their products and services. So they will do well and their products will be available. They will survive for a long term and employees will be happy. Now CSR, okay, it's a system. It's a way for a company to do something. But can you affect how businesses operate ethically? So now if you bring this to the personal level, like what can I do to make sure that the businesses are working the way they should be on the lines of like CSR. So sometimes we may feel that uh, as an individual, we may not have power, but we can always enforce our own ethical behavior. It is our choice who we are doing business with. So when we are buying something or if we are using some services or buying some services, we have a choice to go with those companies that work towards like CSR kind of model. Once you get a job, once you start earning a lot of money, you'll have a lot of money left over. And that money you can invest in so many different ways. So again, there you can make a choice, like you can choose your companies wisely that I want to invest in these companies who behave responsibly and not those companies who are known to exploit their workers or who are known to exploit uh, all kinds of situations. Not only that, you decide like who you want to work for. If you graduate from here in your senior year, let's say you have like three offers, then you choose like which company you want to go with. You can do some research and see, apart from like obviously salary is important. If one company offers you, let's say 80,000 and another company offers you 90,000, 
some people may not even think twice and just go with the money. But sometimes you want to look at the background of the company and see what they are doing, whether you want to work for this company for next 10, 15, 20 years or not. So those are the things we can decide at our level. There are things that companies do on their own. There are things that we do at our level. But the government also does things. There are legal regulations and compliance because government also knows that unless sometimes uh, rules are in place, people may not behave the way they should. So laws are created to govern the products or processes of a specific industry. So one example is uh, this Consumer Bill of Rights in 1962, long back, which brought this right to safety, right to choose, right to information, right to be heard. So all those rights are available to everybody. What is legal compliance? Conducting a business within the boundaries of all the legal regulations of that industry. So chemical industry may have one kind of like regulations. Automobile have like another kind of regulations. For example, there is a government organization called NHTSA, N-H-S-T-A. And if they get a lot of complaints from customers or consumers of aut automobiles, they can go after these big companies. And sometimes the companies have to pay like very big fines running into millions or even billions. But what happens when there is a violation of ethics and law? And one of the biggest examples of this is Enron. Enron was the seventh largest US company at its zenith just before the start of 21st century. This was among the top energy company in the world. So it had written a code of ethics. So all the documents were available. You could find everything on their website that they behave ethically and they believe in environmental values. Everything was in place. The way the company should behave, at least from outside, anybody, investor sees that, they feel that this is the ideal company in the world. There's no other company like Enron. And their share prices were going up, up, up. But in 2001, fraudulent financial practices surfaced and the company almost instantly went bankrupt. And the key officers were found guilty of fraud and other charges. So they were manipulating data and they were showing to the outside world that our company is really growing, our profits are growing. So basically investors were fooled. So Arthur Anderson, Enron's accounting firm. So that company was also convicted of obstruction of justice and the firm had to be closed. As a result of all these episodes, a very important act called Sarbanes-Oxley Act, it was passed in 2002. It had very strict corporate finance requirement and penalties. So recovering from weak ethical conduct. So if businesses are affected by this, sometimes a big business where there are like 500,000 people working and it's not fault of like all 500,000 people who are put at risk of losing their jobs because the company is going bankrupt. But it could be a handful of people at the top or some people who did this. So how do you re recover from that kind of conduct? Many times uh, we come across like uh, whistleblowers. So whistleblower is an employee who reports misconduct most often to an authority outside the firm. And these are the famous examples. Jeffrey, a vice president of tobacco company who revealed in 60 minutes his company was deliberately manipulating effect of nicotine when they are doing promotions or marketing of their product. And uh, Sergeant Joseph uh, Derby, he sent anonymous note and also some pictures of US Army's criminal investigation command of abuse taking place in Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. But what are the strategies uh, to recover from such a situation? So obviously that company, let's say, company like Enron, although they went bankrupt, but if there was some way of saving at least the good parts of the company, then finding a good leader who has a good reputation in the business world would be probably the first step. And then empower all employees, like make it very clear that everybody is empowered and any such things, if they are seen, they should be reported. And also redesign internal rewards to encourage employees to be more participative. Now creating new markets with ethical focus. This is not something very new now. For several years, uh, businesses 
they want to project that they are green and lean, for example, they don't create too much waste. So new markets with ethical focus could involve offering clean fuel, creating uh, medical vaccines, fighting censorships uh, in some countries where the government is run by like dictators and going green. That way one can show to the world that we have ethical focus. So ethical focus from start, it is something that has to be started from beginning. You have to start from step number one. And steps to make sure employees get off to an ethical start. A new employee is joining a company. From first day I have seen most of the businesses, you usually don't start working from day one. There will be some time you will be given training. And one of the components of that training will be ethical issues. So people want to start with that and all this is shared, code of ethics. So they will share that document with you. What is the mission statement? And there will be some orientation programs where people will come and share their stories. But not only on the first day or during the beginning, but it has to be focused every day. So communicate regularly about acceptable behavior. So it is important that people are reminded again and again. Check to make sure that the code of ethics is being followed. So the senior management especially, they have to make sure that things are happening. Create a hotline for anonymous reports. So if somebody wants to report, there should be a system. Employ ongoing ethics training. So all those are important, uh, not only in business, but even in real world.